know if that helps. All right, is everybody ready? Yes. Good to go. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Berwick Planning Board meeting. This is a uh, regular meeting for Thursday, April 2nd, 2020. If we can uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Here. Pledge allegiance, allegiance to the, the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, that really worked out well. <laughs> uh, the board members present tonight, we have the, uh, the Vice Chair, Nicole Fecto. We also have uh, David Ross Lyons present. We have Frank Underwood present. So, um, David, you'll be a voting member this evening. Okay. Uh, we also have James on the line here, and we have Lee J on the line here. Good evening. And, uh, we're going to have a couple applicants as well. Anybody I miss? I think that's pretty much it. All right. Well, we have no public comment session for tonight. James, did you get any emails or anything? No, no, no public hearing. Um, I believe Terry can have a slide up to go live that if someone wanted to call in. Um, or they can email you, I think, is the you best. You can email me ahead of time, that. correct. Yeah. All right, so moving on, approval of minutes for the March 5th, 2020 meeting. I had a couple of comments, Dave. Yeah. Um, I noticed under paragraph six, it said Mike LaRue, and there's no motion. And I think that's where we, this would be for the um, six, uh, CAF Love and Pond. Go back up a little bit, James. Oh yeah, we didn't act on that at all. Did we? Did we not act on it? Because we got a vote. If we did, did we find it complete? Well, that's what I'm on, was wondering. On the Pond Road application? Yes. yes. Um, no, all you did was that was sketch review, and so okay. you okay. should have just um, basically given them direction to whatever you wanted them to go back and and do. See right. right there, it says a motion, Mike LaRue. So there was never a motion. It must have been. It must have been application completeness. If we set a sidewalk in public hearing, I don't know if you've actually found it complete at this point. Yeah. Can, you go, can you go back to the? Um, can you go back to the tape and review it, James? Before. Um, yeah. It's just that we we voted on a motion that passed. But there's no motion beside Mike's name at what, as to what it was. That was my comment. Yeah, yeah I don't think that we voted on. I, I don't think that we voted on the, the application being complete. Can we just postpone action on this for the meeting? And then no. the only, I did one more question too. I noticed under the Hersom subdivision, when uh, the applicant Chris Mendy was speaking, he made a question as to whether or not we would require a high intensity soil survey. And I don't think we ever answered his question. Uh, I do know that further on tonight's agenda, they are down there. And uh, we had listed three waivers that they are requested. And maybe this is something that can be handled just by adding a fourth waiver. Would, would that be acceptable, Lee J? I Yes, um, that's acceptable. Um, he did provide some soils information, though, in the latest submission that we just got the other day. The plan has uh, the soils on the plan, and he provided the HHE 200 form for the septic system design. I see all that, but he did ask here, asked if a high intensity would be required. James has that paragraph in front of us now, and Maybe, right. maybe it's a moot point, but it, because he's, he's gone forward with the HHE and the test pitting and stuff. So. Right. I mean, I would, uh, I, you could, you could include that as a waiver because you haven't taken any actions on it yet. Yeah. Um, and that's up for discussion tonight. So yes, you could include that as a waiver. I mean, it just closes the loop because he's sure. done the net calculation of buildable property. It's on the, on the drawing and. Correct. Okay. Yep. Yeah. No, you're, you're fine with that, Frank. Well, we'll talk about it more under that item. Thank you. Yes. All right. So we want to postpone action on the minutes until we get the clarification on that? I think so. Okay. All right. There's no public hearing schedule for tonight. Moving on to old business, conditional use application. Substantial expansion, 541 Portland Street map, R72, lot 7-A. It's in the RCI zone and the applicant's ready mix companies. James, what do you got? So... My recommendation for tonight, uh, we had a public hearing scheduled for March, uh, the last meeting in March. And with this type of um, 
it's a substantial expansion. And what we do with our land use ordinance amendment uh, coming in June is this type of project would be allowed to be permitted straight through our code enforcement officer. So it is the staff's recommendation that we cancel the public hearing and act on it tonight. Um, I can scroll scroll down and um, and Justin could fill in on any details if you have any any questions. Um, this is just a picture of the site plan. There's the entrance off Route 4 and there's a proposed uh, expansion here and that's for garage parts and that's a, it's a use that's already happening on the, the property it just conf confines it to one area and they're going to have an office manager there on, on uh for that building yeah i think that that's fine i had yeah, I, I, had mean, no, I had no problems with it as well so i don't know if it, it, it Board had any questions or if Justin want to add any more information, um, I can scroll back up and these are the, the findings of facts here. I mean, nothing's changed since our last meeting on this application, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, nothing has. And James pretty much explained it well, so um, exactly what we're going to be doing. Okay. All right, so the application has been voted complete, and then tonight we have to vote on the findings of facts and then the conditions of approval and then I don't see any conditions of approval. Do we have any? There's just two. It's the standard ones. Okay, great. Okay. So I um I move that we find the findings of fact for the applicant ready mix companies at 541 Portland Street um, that we accept the findings of fact. Okay, so we have a motion by Nicole. Do I'll second. Second? Seconded by David. All right, so we'll do a roll call vote. Further further discussion. Okay. Um, Nicole Yay. David. Yay. Frank. Yes. And we have Sean who's on here now too. I'm on. Can you hear me? I yes. can hear you now. Okay. Uh, I was muted okay. before. So Frank. Yes. And I vote yes. So that's four to zero. So that is. Uh, I didn't vote. Did you count me? I vote yes. Well, did, were you listening? Yes. You were. I was. I was okay. on. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, Sean. Yes. Okay, <laughs> that's the findings of fact five zero. So can, there's two conditions of approval you can see at the end of the page, which are the standard ones that we uh, put on there. Uh, first section nine eight H two conditional use approval for the use stated in this decision shall expire in one year if that use has not been commenced. And number two, the conditional use shall ensure to the benefit of the applicant and bind its successors and assigns and shall be deemed to run with the land. So those are conditions. We have a motion to approve the conditions. Do you want the motion or to approve the application with the conditions? Sure. I, I, I move that we approve the application subject to the conditions presented in the findings of fact. Okay. Second. Seconded by Sean? Correct. Okay. So roll call vote. Nicole? Yay. David? Yay. Frank? Yes. Sean? Yes. And I vote yes. That's five, two, Nothing. All right. That's it. Thanks, Justin. Okay. Thank you, Justin. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Hi, Justin. Do it well. Thanks for uh, bearing with us on this. Uh, and making history with the planning board. I know. Yeah, it work, it, it's working smoothly. So yeah, that's I appreciate good. it. Thank you. So far. So far. Uh, next for <laughs> old business is conditional use application adult use marijuana storefront 60 route 236 map. 57 block 55 it's in the rci zone and the applicant is silver therapeutics i think i saw silver on here right are they on with us yeah i see joshua silver on here i don't um i don't know if he's muted or not yeah josh right. silver is here and i think my uh, <clears throat> uh landscape architect chris smith is on too oh, I chris, see are, you, okay. are you here chris smith is on also all right i'll turn it over to james all right, so since the last time the um, applicant has done the requested uh, drainage improvements, so instead of the parking lot being um, pervious pavement, it is now just regular pavement, and the drainage swale has been added along the, um, the fence line of uh, tax map 5754. And I believe that um, is 
everything the, the board had requested. And again, if Josh and Chris, if you have further further detail on, on that that you'd like to add, um, I could, could turn it over to you for that. So the only the only additional thing there was there was a request for the fence um, between our yes. our lot and um, the neighbors. I guess that's lot fifty. Yeah. yeah, so we increased the height of that fence to six feet, so it matches the other side, so um, there's a better visual barrier between uh, AG Therapeutics and the neighbor. Perfect. If I'm not mistaken, though, hasn't this plan been revised to include a stormwater pond down near the well location and in around the area where that light stanchion is to take care of the stormwater going to the other side. That's the sketch that James sent us back on Right, the so the sketch that you're looking yeah. at is an older sketch. <laughs> because yeah. I've, well, I've, I've seen the new plan. I thought we had a plan with a, with a deten little detention pond down by the well. It's that's that's what I'm detention. talking about, Sean, yeah. Yeah. Yes, we printed off. Um, we printed off eleven by seventeens and had them delivered. Um, yeah, I got the wrong the plan. Oh, James. Okay. Yeah, so yes, we added a uh, vegetated swale. Well, a swale along the um, setback line for Silver Therapeutics <laughs> and um, Lot 54. That, that's not working, James. <laughs> but J James did send us the one that showed the, de the detail down in the corner, the cross section of the swale and the detention pond, showed the fence, the fence height. Um, at the far end down towards Route 236, it did show a bio biomediation area or whatever it was called. I do want you to know, I sent a copy of that to Chief Plant, or I gave a copy of it when I went down and got a burn permit. So he was the <laughs> abutter on the southern side that had raised the issue about the drainage. So Dennis has seen that drawing that James had forwarded to us. So as long as we're operating on the correct drawing tonight, I have no problem. So. Yeah, I've seen that plan as well, and, and I felt, there it is. There it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah. You got it, James. Felt, All right, cool. Yeah. Felt much more yeah, comfortable with that design because that's what we had discussed during the site visit. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, James, would you mind just Frank, you're in the way. Like an 11 by 17 of that? <laughs> now Dave's in the way. <laughs> How am I in the You're way? in the pond, Dave. <laughs> How did Frank get in the pond? <laughs> James has you in the Here pond. A little, little further, a little up, down. <laughs> up. Right there, stop, stop. There we go. We have it in an email also, um, sometime, I think, March 16th, if you want. That's the plan we're, we're acting on. Right, that is the plan. <laughs> and it, Not the plan that was in the packet for tonight. Okay. Gotcha. Correct. And it does Correct. show the fence. Yep. And yep, it I got it right now. The pond. All right, any questions from the board? Let's start with Nicole. I don't have any questions on this plan. I only have one question. It has to do with the findings of fact, so. Okay, David. I do not at this time. Frank, do you have any other questions? Uh, just one more. I thought this property um, was connected to the sewer, the, the Burke Sewer District. Um, I knew the well because they, we walked over and we saw the well in the front corner near where that bio pond's going. But is this property connected to the sewer district or is it on a septic system? If it's on a septic system, I would like to make sure we have a current HHE 200 form on file for this project. It's connected to the sewer. I, I thought so. I thought so. so it, yeah. Yeah, the so part of the don't say that. <laughs> so you're going to need to adjust paragraph 12 in the finding of facts, I think. Um, and paragraph 17. Yeah, our original submission had correspondence between the sewer district. 17 and is correct, Nicole. Nicole. 
No, I think it's um, 12, 12 reads fine because it says no new impacts to services were identified, but 17 needs to be says corrected. that that's the one that needs to be corrected. Yeah, okay. And the only other one on the finding of facts, if, if, I would, if you would go back up to paragraph two, James. I agree with you, Frank. Stop stealing all my findings of fact errors. But Dave said we start at my end of the table now, but I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I guess... I guess we're picking and choosing off the column here on the right. right so try yeah, go ahead, things. go for it, go for it. But it just says no new landscaping has been proposed, and we've got nothing but all new landscaping. So that yeah. just needs to be. I, yeah, I think Frank, part of that issue is because those those were drafted before the plan had been revised. Okay. So that just needs to be reworded to say there's a proper. I mean, because they've got three different types of trees and shrubs and yeah, everything else out there. So. And then Correct. maybe even include the um, the fencing also. Yeah, fencing for screening as well. <clears throat> yeah, I can um, clean those up first thing in the morning and get them right down to you guys. So if you do take action tonight, Dave um, should be able to sign those tomorrow if he chooses to get into town hall or whenever. However you guys are going to handle that side of things. Those are the only two I had. Okay, Sean, questions? No, I don't have anything. All right, so tonight we'll be voting on the uh, findings of fact. Can I just ask James one thing? Did Chief Plant follow up with James after I gave you, him the plan, James? Because I told him if he had any questions and he wanted to see a large copy. I only had an 8.5 by 11. I asked him he, to come in. He came in and he just wanted to make sure that the swale was draining to a particular location that was that was his i saw him today okay good thank you anything else before we vote on the findings of fact and the application all right so somebody would like to make a motion to approve the uh findings of fact i'll make a motion that we approve the finding of facts for 60 route 236 uh silver therapeutics Second. with amendments to paragraph Two and seventeen with yes. with the amendments discussed, correct? And I will second that with amendments. Okay, so that motion was made by Frank and seconded by Nicole. Roll call vote. Nicole, yay. David, yay. Frank, yes. Sean, yes. And I vote yes as well. So there are no conditions of approval on this application. You can see down at the bottom of that page. That is correct. Right. So next is uh, we need a motion to approve the application. I'll make the motion that we approve the application for 60 Route 236 Silver Therapeutics. Second. Okay. Motion was made by Frank, seconded by Nicole. Roll call vote. Nicole? Yes. David? Yes. Frank? Yes. Sean? Yes. And I vote yes, so that's five nothing. All right, so thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate all the effort of organizing this online meeting, so thank you. Sure, best of luck to you. Appreciate that. Take yes. care. Bye. All right, next, final plan, subdivision amendment, 241 Cranberry Meadow Road, map R32, lot 15. It's in the R2 zone, and the applicant is Hersom. James. So uh, there's some questions. Uh, Legion handled this, um, but I think the questions were the, the pool setback, and um, I believe there was a medium intensity soil survey done, but I'll let Legion handle the, the rest of it if I miss anything else. Yeah, thanks, James. <laughs> so yeah, um, w during the review of the last plan, there was the question because the survey that had been submitted was not a, a full boundary survey and they needed to confirm location of the um, swimming pool, which was encroaching on a property setback, as well as the, um, I believe it was the well on the um, budding property where it was located. And um, then there had been some discussion that Frank did raise again this evening about soil intensity survey and what level it ought to be. Um, 
the applicant is seeking several waivers, um, which are part of the findings of fact that you have in front of you tonight when you review those. Uh, one, <laughs> excuse me, one is in regards to the um, erosion control plan. Another waiver is a hydrogeologic analysis. And the third waiver was a stormwater study. And um, there are, uh, in the submission application, there are explanations as to why they're requesting those waivers. Um, Chris is on with us this evening. So if there's any need for him to um, discuss those further, I'd, I'd let Chris do that. Other than that, this is an amendment to a previously approved subdivision. And um, I don't see a lot of issues here um, that the board really needs to deal with. It's only a lot split per se. So they're not proposing any construction at this time. It's just a sale, will be a sale of that lot once um, everything is approved and recorded. Because last time on March 5th, we just did a sketch plan. Tonight we'd actually have to find the application complete as well as act on it. Yes, that would be correct. Yep. But isn't this, wasn't the sketch plan showing the lot proposed to be subdivided being on the pool side. Isn't this plan totally the reverse of it, showing the lot on the north side? Because if you go to the last plan, it shows all the wells and the protective radiuses and the building envelopes, which were all issues we had raised with, with Chris when he was in there with the sketch level document. It, Very it, perceptive, Frank. Am yes. I on the wrong plan or am I... No, I know, uh, no, and I think maybe... Um, if go to the Chris bottom. Is, go to the very last one. Thank right you. Let's try not to make it run dizzy. But if go. Chris is um, on here, maybe he can explain away what occurred. Because, yes, the lot, um, the lot split was proposed to be on the east side um, of the house where it says uh, Lyman, um, which would be the soils type in that area. That... I believe is the location where the lot line was proposed to be to create the lot split. And now they're looking at doing something yep. on the north side, you know, uh, the west side, excuse bring me. Bring up a good point. We should make sure that the applicant is online with us <laughs> before we go any further. Uh, may I jump in for a second? This is Chris Mendy. Okay, so you are online. Just want to make sure. Uh, I am here. Okay, go ahead then. Okay, yeah, so since the last meeting, um, I met with the client and we had a discussion, which um, is a little bit humorous, a little bit embarrassing. Apparently before I became involved with this project, the client had had a discussion um, with someone else, uh, another engineer. Um, and they, they told him um, that there was no way that they could do the division um, on the, the side of the house where we're presently showing the lot that he, that he would have to do it where, uh, over on the side where the pool was. Um, and th this just kind of came up in passing. And, it, and I said, why um, would, you con uh, would you consider having it over there? He said, well, that's where we've always wanted it, but we didn't think we could. We didn't think we could meet the setback requirements and frontage requirements. So that's the, that's the reason for the change. He asked me to take a look at it. We looked at it, we can meet the frontage requirements, the setback requirements, the, the lot size requirements. It's much easier to meet the well and septic uh, separations and all of those things. It's, it's really a better location than the other side and it's, it's actually where the client wanted it all along. So I apologize Frank. that this didn't come up earlier, but it wasn't, uh, it was never discussed. No. So Frank, I'm gonna, I, I know what your question is gonna be, so let me jump in and try to answer it. Um, when Chris brought this forward, the last meeting, that was at sketch level. And right. the sketch level does not necessarily, does not gain the applicant any kind of standing in relation to the project. So um, if you're still, <laughs> excuse me, if you're still comfortable with the lot split as proposed tonight, even though it's switched sides, there's really no reason to go back to sketch or anything. Again, this is an amendment to a previously approved subdivision. It does meet all of the standards and the sketch review at the last meeting that we had did not um, buy the applicant any kind of, of standing on, on said project, so. Yeah, I really wasn't questioning that, Lee J. It's just that I wanted to make sure, I remember looking at it and yep. then 
what drew my attention is I'm saying, look, look at all these circles on here, all these radiuses that they've got drawn for welds, because that was a big concern we raised. Sure. And then I said, well, where's the building at all? And then I said, well, <laughs> the whole thing's different. It's the whole reverse side. I have no problem with where they're at in the pro process. Simple I just way. wanted to make sure that everybody yeah. understood that. Yeah, yeah. I was confused too. Any, okay, so first we have to vote on the, uh, the, whether or not the application is complete. And the only question I would ask to make sure all the metrics work, I mean, now that you've had a chance to look at all the metrics, setback, front, everything. Yes, um, from staff standpoint, if you look at, you know, you mentioned all of the circles, you can see that they've got um, proposed leach field locations that are outside the well location on that um, on that property. So they're, they're able to meet that standard. And that's probably the biggest standard um, that is outside of setback requirements. And you can see the setback envelope on the, on the property as well, which they're able to, um, plenty of room to, to be able to put a home on there as well as the, the leach fields. And I do like the fact that the, the gross area, net area calculations are right on individual lots. So that, that's, I give you credit for that, Chris. I think that's great. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to uh, answer any you know, particular questions with regard to this. Um, I can, I can um, go through at any level of detail that you'd like me to. Um, I think the plan and the application addresses um, all of the concerns. Um, one thing that I would touch upon is uh, Frank's question about the high intensity soil survey. Um, we did do a high intensity soil survey for the, the somewhat poorly and the poorly drained, and we delineated those from the, the better drained soils uphill of that. Um, we did do we did have a soil scientist on the site, and he did survey um, the soils of the moderately well drained and the well drained, and concurred with those based on the the um, the uh, York County Soils Survey. So really, the, I, I guess if, if we are, are in fact asking for a waiver, it would be um, that you know, for those well-drained and excessively drained and moderately well-drained soils, we may not have met the letter of the law with regard to the number of test pits and so forth, but we have no questions with regard to those all, be acceptable, all being acceptable soils at 100% and the ones below being acceptable only at 25%. So we did actually map the, the boundaries between those orders. Do you have those documents to be made part of the file? I can provide those. I do not have them in the file. And then I don't think there's any need to deal with a waiver on it. I think due diligence was done to show what we, what, you started it by asking the question. So I think you've done due diligence to show that the soil does support the subdivision uh, split. So I would suggest that 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 just be a condition of the approval that the applicants submit the soils reports um, so that it's on the record. Okay. Okay, I can do that. Are we ready to move forward on application completeness? Yes, I would. Um move that the application for the subdivision of the land at 241 Cranberry Meadow Road is complete. A second. Is that Sean? Yes. Okay, so we have a motion by Nicole, a second by Sean. Further discussion? All right, roll call vote, Nicole? Yes. David? Yes. Frank? Yes. Sean? Yes. And I vote yes, so that is five zero. So James or Lee J, we got the three waivers still, correct? That would be correct. You want to act on those waivers, yes. Yeah, we want to act on those before we go any <coughs> further. So the first waiver is for the stormwater management plan 72D30. Correct. They are shown on the drawing, correct? I think I saw them listed on there down the bottom, the three waivers. Because aren't waivers supposed to be on the they plan are that's going to be recorded? Can you go back to that. The the plan will need to be revised once you act on the waivers because they don't know whether you're going to grant them or not. So they're not going to put them on the plan until after they're they acted are, on. They're requested on the plan, though. Yeah, they're on the plan. I think 
they have to be on the plan that's going to be recorded, correct? Correct. Yeah, the, re the request is on the plan. The actual waivers are at the bottom of the findings um, that I had drafted and sent out to you folks for tonight's meeting. Yep. All right, Stanley, let me get there. I was at the beginning looking at your list. Uh, we'll do it. Um, if, I, if I can jump in, they are shown on the plan um, just as they're shown in the findings of that. Yeah, I thought I saw them. Here we go. Here yeah, they are. They're on the on the plan as requested. Yep. All right, so let's vote on the first waiver, the stormwater management plan. Yes, I I, I actually grouped my my um my uh, reasons for the request for, for both the first waiver and the second, the second being the erosion and sedimentation control plan. Um, my reasons for requesting those two is the, the project's not located in a watershed of a great pond. The project does not involve grading that changes drainage, drainage patterns on the property. And the project will not increase their impervious surfaces, roofs and driveways by more than 5%. And I've listed those calculations on the plan as to what the developments could be. And they're, they're well within, they give plenty of room for normal development for a house and driveway and garage and what have you. Um, then I'll make the motion we grant the waiver for 7.2 D30 stormwater management plan for the Kersom subdivision. Second. Okay, a motion by Frank, seconded by Nicole. Further discussion? Roll call vote, Nicole? Yes. David? Yes. Frank? Yes. Sean? Yes. My vote yes, that's 5-0. <clears throat> All right, so the second is 7.2.D.31, Erosion and Sedimentation Control Plan. I'll make the motion as well. All and right, so Frank made the motion. Second. Seconded by Nicole. Further discussion? All right, roll call vote, Nicole? Yes. David? Yes. Frank? Yes. Sean? Yes. My vote yes, it's 5-0. And then finally... Uh, 7.2.D.23, Hydrogeologic Assessment. I understand that David would like to make this one 7.2D.23, <laughs> Hydrologic Assessment. <laughs> Is that correct, David? Sure. I will uh, make the motion that we approve 7.2.D.23. <laughs> I'll second. Motion made by David, seconded by Sean. Further discussion? Roll call vote, Nicole. Yes. David? Yes. Frank? Yes. John? Yes. And I vote yes. So that's 5 0. All right. So now that the waivers are out of the way, there are no conditions of approval, but we, uh, oh, actually, wait. No, did we have, did we add a condition of approval, BJ? Um, you can. Yeah, we have a condition to submit the soils report. Um, right. Um, you can add it, although Chris did say that he would supply that. So that, in a sense, is kind of a verbal condition self-imposed, but it can't hurt to include the condition that they provide um, the soils information to the town for the, for the record. I mean, do we need to do that right now also? I would do it just as part of your motion for approval. Okay. And I'll, again, I'll be cleaning these up first thing in the morning for you folks and getting them back down to James. Oh, James doesn't work tomorrow, it's Friday. But they'll be in the town hall. So okay. I'm, I move that we add the condition that the applicant submit the soils report to the file. I'll second. Okay, so we're voting on the findings of fact here. No, well, oh, okay. I've made a motion for the, uh, to submit Fine. the soils report. Fuck it, okay. We can put, we can, why don't we, have, we could vote on the findings of facts and conditions of approval. How's that? That would be the way to do it. Right. All right. I will take back my motion. <laughs> and I move that we find the findings of fact for the subdivision at 241 Cranberry Meadow Road and with the condition um, complete. I will still second that. Okay, I make a motion by Nicole and seconded by David. Further discussion? 
Roll call vote. Nicole? Yes. David? Yes. Frank? Yes. Sean? Yes. And I vote yes, so that is 5-0. Now application completeness. Um, um, you've already done that. Are we just ready for final approval? You've already done that as well with the findings of fact, basically. I know. And conditions so you, of well, okay. done All right. Yeah, that's a little out of sorts. Normally we vote on the findings of fact first and then we vote on the application being complete. Mark. You voted on complete? Not application, not application being complete. I'm, I'm saying final approval. Final approval. Okay. That's what I, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. That's fine. So we so have to Lee vote Jay, on the application approval. So Lee J, what is our what, what is our motion that's that remains? The final approval? Yes. The final the approval. Chair, the chairman has made that clear. Okay. <laughs> so I move that we find the or we move that we approve the final plan for the subdivision amendment at two four one Cranberry Meadow Road. The first from subdivision, correct. correct. I'll second that. Okay, motion by Nicole, seconded by Frank. Further discussion? <laughs> Roll call vote. Nicole? Yes. David? Yes. Frank? Yes. John? Yes. And I vote yes, so that's 5 0. Okay, so that's it for that application. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Great. Thanks. Ooh, I, I will um, get that report to James, and I guess I will get a final plan for signature? Yes. Okay. Make sure the, you know, the plan has the waivers, which you've already got on it, and um, that's it. Yeah, just, good. Just Do drop you the sign the waivers separately? No. At one point in time, I thought they used to sign off on the waivers separately, but the fact that we voted and made it part of the record, I think that's it. Places. Correct. Yeah. Okay. You're good. Yep. Okay, thank you all. Hope you thank all you. stay well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Chris. Okay. Bye, See, because normally how we vote is we, we first vote application completeness, uh, or we vote on the findings of fact, then the conditions of approval, and then the application in whole. So that we normally, normally take three votes at the end. That's why I guess it got a little confusing there. Yeah, if you see my uh, findings of fact down right after the... Um, waiver request <clears throat> you'll see three votes right waiting to be taken do, yeah correct yeah. i screwed it all up continue <laughs> no, Chuck, <laughs> Chuck it up to zoom. <laughs> find our footing here with with this virtual meeting so. i've got a quarantine yeah, talking up the zoom jitters <laughs> i've got a quarantine with my name on it let's wrap this up all right public comment james did you get any emails no emails terry did you get any phone calls nothing all right. Uh, any informational items from the board that they'd like to share? The only thing I would right. ask, uh, right. the only thing I would ask of James is the is the size of the agenda, the number of people calling in, and this, that, and the other. This was this was perfect tonight as far yeah. as number it of tasks really at hand. Yeah. yeah, the more more complex the project is, we'll definitely kind of kind of keep it spread out, and then um, you know try to keep it as smooth as just like tonight as, as yep. it'll be more com public hearings will be a little, little bit more complicated but yep. we'll try to uh, get the word out as much as possible and try to make it well, and definitely on the public hearing ones you know if they want to provide written comment to you guys before the meeting you know that's that's probably the best way and you can circulate it it doesn't mean you have to read verbatim um, you know, their, their comments, as long as all of the board members have gotten copies or it's posted as part of the presentation, like, like you did tonight with the findings. And I mean, there's the, you know, the, 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 with the governor's legislation changing this process for us in the short term, um, there's a lot of leeway. Certainly you want to make sure that people are notified appropriately and that, People have an opportunity to provide their information, but within that, there's a lot of leeway for us to be able to to operate. So um, 
again, you're not going to have to read those verbatim per se. It's a matter of the board having copies of all of that if it's written comments that have been submitted. Terry, is there any way to patch in the the audio from the phone through the through the board? Um, so what I was going to do if I got a call, I was going to put it on speakerphone and allow them to go through my audio that way. Um, I'll work on something else. I also wanted to let you know I had some difficulties this evening with my streaming piece of it. It wasn't holding for channel uh, 95. It is being recorded here, so I've got a full recording. I'll render it and get it up as soon as possible. Awesome. Thank you. So let the record show the planning board set the uh, standard and the selectmen have to rise up to meet our standard. They can surpass it if they so choose. They won't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually want to go on record and, and say, Terry, thank you for all of your hard work on making yeah. this happen. Yep. I know you've, you've faced a lot of obstacles and challenges along the way, and, and thank you. You're very welcome. Glad it worked out. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, the it person worked. to your right left a high five. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> it, it worked out fine, and I know we've been working on these types of issues with many of our towns and trying to get them up and running, and I know a couple of towns that are just saying, no, we're not going to do anything. Um, so you guys forging ahead like this, and, and I think it's working fine. We'll be good in the short term, and you know, hopefully we can get over this period. Yes. So, Lee J, where are you sitting? Uh, I'm, I'm at home for okay. Frank. <laughs> I'm in the corner. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything for the board? All right, I guess next on the agenda is the adjournment. Uh, I do a motion that we adjourn the first Zoom planning board meeting in the town of Berwick. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. I'll second. Is that Sean? There's Sean. Look at you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All in favor, uh, roll call vote. Nicole? Yes. David? Yes. Frank? Yes. Sean? <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Sean? Yes. And I vote yes. So meeting adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. That was awesome. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks, everybody.